Today on Passion for Food, I'll show you a couple of simple little hacks to get the perfect pizza crust as we make this delicious pan pizza. Let's get started. The primary hack for our pizza dough is going to be to use hot water. Now I see this debated endlessly online amongst bakers. And if we were in a commercial kitchen and concerned about the shelf life of our finished dough, I probably wouldn't use hot water, but ultimately it's going to speed up the process at home and help us get that perfect crust that we're looking for. But make sure it's not too hot. You should be able to stick your finger into it without any pain. We're looking for about 100 to 110 degrees. We need about one cup. We're probably going to need less than that. But it's good to have a little extra in case we need to adjust. So into our mixing bowl we go with two cups of bread flour. You can use all-purpose flour, but the bread flour has more protein, which will lead to more gluten. That's that uh, chewiness that you want in your pizza crust. And in we go with a pinch of sugar. That's about a teaspoon of sugar along with a teaspoon of salt. And as for the yeast, you usually have two options, this active dry or fast rising. The main difference being the fast rising you can add directly to the flour, whereas the active dry should be bloomed first in a little bit of warm water. So we're going to use the fast rising today, which is often also labeled instant or bread machine yeast. And we have our hot water ready, which we're not going to add all at once. We can't be sure how much water we're going to need, so we're going to drizzle that in as we mix. There are several factors that affect the flour to water ratios, including your elevation, ambient humidity, how packed the flour was, and more. So it's important to pay attention to how the dough looks as you're adding the water so that we can get it just to the perfect amount of hydration. We need to be careful as we're adding the water because it can take a minute for it to get mixed in. So you might have a mix that looks too dry, but you just haven't given it enough time yet. It's very easy to add too much water and wind up with a sticky catastrophe. Ultimately, we were looking for a slightly sticky dough ball that pulls away from the sides. If you don't have one of these mixers, you can just do this with your hands. It's actually a little faster that way, I think. As we can see here, our dough ball is pulling away from the sides nicely. So at this point, we're just going to continue to knead our dough for about 10 minutes or until it becomes very silky and quite stretchy. That's that gluten we're developing. So after about 10 minutes of kneading, I was happy with how this looks. So we're going to go ahead and pull this out. And just to test our gluten structure, I'm going to give this a little stretch to make sure I'm happy with it and then form it into a tight little ball and get it ready for the first of two proofings. Most pizza recipes I see just do a single proving for the crust, but I really feel like I get a better flavor and texture doing a double proving, at least when I'm doing one of these pan pizzas. To help our dough not dry out, we're going to give it a quick coating with some oil. I'm just using some spray oil here, but you could just drizzle on some olive oil. And we're just going to cover this and let it rise for 30 minutes to an hour. If we're talking about lower temperatures, like in the 70s Fahrenheit, you'll probably need about an hour. But if you're up in the 80s, 30 minutes will be fine. I definitely don't recommend any warmer than that. So now that our dough is proofing, let's get a little saucy and make a simple pizza sauce. Now, sure, we could just buy pizza sauce, but with how quick and easy it is to make, that would be criminal. All we're going to need is one six ounce can of tomato paste, along with six ounces of water. So you can just rinse out that tomato can and use it to measure the water. That's what I do. To that, we're going to add about two teaspoons of salt, along with about a teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper along with a teaspoon each of garlic powder and onion powder, and about a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. We are also going to go in with our dark horse secret ingredient, about half a teaspoon of MSG. A lot of traditional Italian sauces actually have anchovies in them, which are sometimes referred to as Italian MSG. But because I want to keep this quick, simple, and I don't want to have anchovies in the house, I'm just going to use powdered MSG along with a pinch of sugar. And you may have noticed we haven't mixed in the tomato paste with the water and the seasonings yet, and you may be wondering why we haven't done that. 
Well, the reason is these dried herbs and spices actually need to hydrate before you get the full flavor potential. And it's a lot harder for them to do that if they're in a very thick, viscous liquid, which is what we're going to wind up with. So I'm actually going to bring this water up to a boil before I mix everything together. That's going to give our herbs a chance to really soak in with the water and release their maximum flavor. But once our water starts boiling, that's it. We're finished. All we have to do is whisk in the tomatoes and voila, we have our beautiful thick pizza sauce ready. Once we get our tomato paste whisked in, we want to remove this from the heat. If you try and simmer it, you're just going to wind up with hot tomato lava flying everywhere. No one likes that. You do want to give it a quick taste and adjust for seasoning as necessary. But that's it. I mean, how easy was that? I'm lazy, but I'm not let's buy pizza sauce lazy. So after about 45 minutes, you can see our dough has about doubled in size. So let's just knock the air out of that and we're going to go into our pan. And as for our pan, I'm going to make the slightly unusual pizza choice of going with one of these freakishly large glass Pyrex pans. This one is actually 10 and a half by about 15 inches. So this is going to make a very large pan pizza for us. A lot of people will tell you you need a special pan for pizza or a pizza stone or something like that, but that's simply not true. And here's where our second little simple pizza hack comes in. We are going to coat the bottom of this pan with about a teaspoon of salted grass-fed butter. This is going to give our pizza crust a wonderful buttery flavor as well as help it get the crispy consistency we're looking for. Pro tip, use cold butter. If you try and melt the butter and just coat the pan, it'll be a lot harder to spread the crust out. The cold butter actually helps the crust cling to the pan, which is ideal as we're spreading it out here. If your dough is a little on the sticky side, you can actually also coat your fingers with the butter just to prevent stickage. They always say don't play with your food, but it sure can be fun. Just to make things a little easier on ourselves, we're going to try and stretch out the dough to more or less a similar shape to our container. And just a quick note, if you don't have one of these big glass Pyrex pans, this method will work with just about any kind of pan. Cast iron would be my second choice here. So we're just going to press our dough flat going right up to the edges of the pan. We want to try and create a raised lip around the outside perimeter. That'll just help keep the cheese and sauce contained. Once we have this evenly distributed, we're going to cover this with a towel and give it a second 20 minute proving session. So while we're waiting for that, I'm going to go ahead and get our cheese ready. You could just use standard low moisture mozzarella cheese that you can grate, but I'm going to use some fresh mozzarella today. It's very soft and springy, but of course you can't use a grater on it. It's way too soft. So with the thinnest bladed knife we have, we're going to give that a slice instead. Another good way to do that would be dental floss, but I'm just going to use the knife today. If you've never tried fresh mozzarella, it's a little different, but it's definitely worth it. So give it a shot. And after 20 minutes, you can see our crust has puffed up here a bit. And it's finally time to assemble our perfect pan pizza. So on we go with our pizza sauce. Now we don't want to use too much pizza sauce. I think I wound up using approximately half of what we made here. I froze the other half for another pizza another day. On top of that, I'm going to be adding about four to five ounces of crumbled feta cheese. I really love the flavor that feta cheese brings to a pizza. But importantly, I always add it underneath the mozzarella and other cheeses. Feta is a relatively dry cheese that isn't really going to melt in this context. So if you put it on top of the mozzarella, it's going to get very dry and a little unpleasant. So always put that right on top of the sauce. So I'm going to layer in our slices of fresh mozzarella. And I actually managed to get it all on there, so that's a whole pound of fresh mozzarella on this pizza. I know that's a lot, but don't worry, it's actually easy making a pizza that cheesy. And just to add insult to injury, I'm going to top that with a little grated Parmesan cheese as well to make it a three cheese pizza. And we're ready to go into the oven. So in we go to a 400 degree oven for between 25 and 40 minutes, depending on the size and the amount of toppings that we're using. 
As this is baking, some of my more eagle-eyed observers might notice that the pizza disappears for a moment and reappears magically with pepperoni on it. Yes, I had meant to put pepperoni on it and simply forgot that messed up my baking time a little bit, so try not to do that with yours. For the best results with your crust, I suggest having this on the lowest rack of your oven. After about 35 minutes, mine was ready to pull out. And I like getting it out of the pan and onto a cooling rack pretty much right away that lets the steam come off of the crust and prevents it from getting soggy. And we do want to let this cool about 10 minutes before we try and cut into it. So after it's had time to cool, I'm going to transfer it onto a cutting board and go ahead and give it a slice. You can actually hear that crust even just as I'm slicing it. It should be nice and crunchy on the outside, but soft and chewy on the inside. That's the perfect pizza crust. And because we let it cool down a little, our cheese has solidified nicely and it's not just running onto the board as we cut. So let's have a look at the underside here to see if we've achieved that perfect crusty perfection that we were going for. You can see that buttery golden brown color we've achieved and you can hear that beautiful crustiness. So let's go in for a quick bite here. And we really have achieved pizza crusty perfection. This version of pan pizza really comes out great, so I hope you give it a try. So what foods are you passionate about? Is there something you'd like to see me prepare next? Let me know in the comments below. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing and hitting that little bell to be notified of our future episodes. This has been Graham with Passion for Food.